In today's video, I'm going to give you guys the step-by-step -step guide on exactly how you're going to become an influencer this year. For real, I know you said you're going to be an influencer last year. I know you said you were going to post last year, but this year, I'm going to give you the step-by-step -step formula on exactly how to do it. Very, very requested YouTube video. This is how to become an influencer slash how to grow a following. Okay, we're getting into what you should be doing to start your influencer business with zero dollars and not a lot of followers. And I'm going to... So what would it look like for you to turn into the influencer that you are? For you to share your aha moments, allowing people to see your reality and allowing them to know that you accept whatever their reality is. Can you imagine if we got online every day with the lens of an influencer, sharing our aha moments? What would that two and a half hours of time look like for you? What would that two and a half hours of time look like for someone else? What would it look like for the person who's spending at least 10% of their day to log on feeling lonely when they log in, but coming to a place where they find community and acceptance and encouragement? What if 10% of their day became the most uplifting part of their day because they sign online? What if, by sharing your own reality, by sharing your story, you change someone's life simply because you chose to have a positive effect on their character, their development, their behavior? How then? Might the world look different? Thank you. And so today, I'm not going to convince you to get off of social media. In fact, I think social media is great. I think we're using it the wrong way. I think we're logging in with a, with a mentality that's one where we just go and waste time. Today, I want to give you an aha moment so that the next time you log in to whatever social platform it is you participate on, you might see it through a new lens. The lens I want you to see it through is through that of an influencer. OK, let's get it out of the way. What just went through your head? Did you have visions of Fire Festival and boats going to islands that don't exist? Or are you thinking of the many uh, women or fashion influencers who are showing you what they're wearing in front of a mirror, visco girls, whatever the trend is right now? Or maybe you thought of that one person who continually pops to the top of your feed trying to sell you a product you don't want and you don't need. Yes, that's what our culture tells us is an influencer. But that's not what an influencer is. And when I worked in marketing a few years ago, people would actually argue about the definition of influencer. Yes, this would be something that went on in the industry where you had to have a certain number of followers or a certain number of impressions. Of course, no one could agree on this definition. But I have a friend, Miriam Webster. I decided to go to Merriam-Webster's dictionary to find the definition of influence. Because after all, I am attorney and an attorney, and we need to start with the basics, something we all agree on. <clears throat> and so today, I'm not going to convince you to get off of social media. In fact, I think social media is great. Influence. The definition of influence is the capacity to have an effect on the character, behavior, development of someone or something.
Okay, so when we look at this definition, the capacity to have an effect. <sighs> There's no qualifier for that capacity. You don't have to be a certain age, gender, race, ethnicity, sexual orientation. You don't have to belong to a certain political party or a certain religious group or have a degree from a specific school. You most certainly don't have to have a certain amount of income or followers or impressions or reach or whatever else we can't agree on. Or if influence is the capacity to have an effect on the character, the behavior, the development of those around us, and it's not qualified, we must all have this capacity. Therefore, we're all influencers. Just looking at the definition. This didn't really hit home for me until many years later after I did this research and agreed that I was satisfied with my own definition of influence. In March of 2018, I was diagnosed with stage three invasive... I want to take you back 10 years, 2009. Facebook had 350 million active users. Instagram was not even created yet. It didn't come around until 2010. Today, Instagram has about a billion active users. Facebook, two and a half billion active users. By all best guesses, nearly half of the world is on some kind of social media platform. And not only are we on these platforms, we are spending time on these platforms. Two and a half hours per day, per user, was the research for 2019. By the end of our lifetime, the Bureau of Labor and Statistics is predicting that this generation of users will have spent seven years of their life on social media. That's more than house cleaning, shopping, in-person socialization combined. So if we're spending all of this time on social media, then it must be good for us, right? We must have these wonderful side effects of spending time on these online platforms. Well, as you know, and as we've heard earlier, the, the effects of social media aren't all that positive. Recent studies indicate that 50% of social media users would say that they feel amused or entertained after interacting on social media. Other people indicate they feel envious, depressed, isolated, lonely, dissatisfied with life. I was very unhappy. Last year, the University of Pennsylvania did a study that directly correlated the more time we're spending on social media, the higher the likelihood of negative effects on our physical health, on our mental health, and on our general life satisfaction. I was very unhappy. I quit my nine to five job to pursue social media full time. So if we're spending all of this time on social media, but yet the effects are directly negative by the amount of time that we spend, why in the world are we on there to begin with? The psychology for both yourself and your audience to improve. Yes, that's what our culture tells us is an influencer. I was very unhappy. I quit my nine to five job to pursue social media full time I, because now I can help other people do the same. I was very unhappy. Influencer influence. I was very unhappy because now I can help other people do the same. That's what this is all about. Okay. I was very unhappy because now I can help other people do the same. No gatekeeping. Yes, that's what our culture tells us is an influencer. And so today I'm not going to convince you to get off of social media. In fact, I think social media is great. I think we're using it the wrong way. I think we're logging in with a, with a mentality that's one where we just go and waste time. Today I want to give you an aha moment so that the next time you log in to whatever social platform it is you participate on, you might see it through a new lens. The lens I want you to see it through is through that of an influencer. Hello everybody, this is Kelly Stamps. Welcome to the Stampede University School of Influencing. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> That was a pretty chaotic introduction. Well, guess what? So is the world of being an influencer. It is absolutely chaotic and so far not controlled, which means there's absolutely no barrier to entry. The, I think my favorite part of being an influencer is truly that there is no barrier to entry. Anyone can do this with the right advice and tips and mindset. I have changed my life drastically. I went from being a crazy girl with bangs in Santa Monica to a crazy girl with bangs in Santa Monica with a fat checking account and great retirement and all around just anyone can live this lifestyle and i am not a gatekeeper i'm here to help you 
no gatekeeping. I was very unhappy because now I can help other people do the same and see success. That's what this is all about, okay? No gatekeeping. Yes, that's what our culture tells us is an influencer. Thank you.